Hi guys, in the last video, we went ahead and set up our credentials for our new user called Joey that we are creating. Now that we've got our public and private key, in particular the signed public key, we can now use those credentials inside of a special file known as the kubeconfig right here. And the kubeconfig is basically the instructions for the kubectl command line utility or kubectl in order to communicate with our Kubernetes cluster. Now, the reason that you haven't probably seen the kubeconfig file in this series so far is because back in our other skill, where we set up our kubeadm cluster, we had the kubeconfig automatically generated by kubeadm, and then it returned a series of different commands to just copy that file to the right file system location so that kubectl can find it. And that location, if we head over to our terminal here, is under our home directory, under the .cube directory. So I'm in home.cube, and then there's a file just named config with no file extension. So if you were to cat that file, cat config, oops, let's do cat cube config, uh, you'll see a whole bunch of gibberish looking stuff here. And these are the certificates that are being used to authenticate to the cluster. So what you'll see here is we've got our client key. That's going to be the uh, private key that was generated when we initialized our cluster with kubeadm. And then we've got the client certificate data. And this is the base64 encoded public key that's been signed by the CA certificate, like what we did in the last video. Only all of that was automated for us by the kubeadm utility when we initialized the cluster. So you've got this section here called users, and then users is a, an array. It's a YAML array as indicated by the dash here. That's how we know it's an array element. And then this array element has a name, user, and then the user has child properties of client certificate data, client key data, and that's pretty much everything. So once you've defined the user itself with a name and the public and private key pair, you then also have the contexts section here, and the contexts will basically simply tie a user that's defined down here in the user section. It'll basically bind that user to a cluster. And so the context is kind of sitting in between the user down here and the cluster, which is defined in a clusters section. So up here, we've got the clusters and then cluster, and it says certificate authority data. This is the base64 encoded public key certificate for the cluster. And then down here, we've got a server property that simply points to the HTTP endpoint of the API server component on the Kubernetes master nodes. So in some cases, you might actually see this pointing to a DNS name for a load balancer. But in this case, since we just have a single master cluster, we just have an IP address and we don't have any load balancer to point to. So what you'll see here is that the cluster itself, so this cluster object that we have right here, and again, clusters in the terms of the kubeconfig is an array because we could actually configure kubectl to talk to more than one cluster. And we could also have more than one user account set up to talk to different clusters. And then the context, again, just kind of binds those together so that we can select a context that we want to use. And uh, what you're going to see here is we have a cluster. And the cluster has a endpoint server. And we have a name. And then that name of the cluster is what's used down here in the context. So basically, we have this user down here, Kubernetes admin, that's being bound to the cluster called Kubernetes. Now, you can give these identifiers whatever name you would like to. You just have to make sure that whatever name you give your user you and whatever name you give your cluster, you use those inside of this little context object so that when you want to switch contexts, you can point to a different context name. And that context name is going to point to a user and a cluster. And that combination will allow you to authenticate using these credentials down here on your user to this cluster right up here. So what we're going to do is actually generate an entirely new kubeconfig file from scratch that contains our server endpoint. And it's going to contain our user credentials right down here. And it's also going to create a context which binds the user to the server. So the server, of course, is going to be all the same. So we could actually theoretically just copy this entire section right here and plug that into a new kubeconfig file. But we're going to go ahead and use kubectl to actually create this file 
from Total Scratch. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll use kubectl. And if you just run kubectl by itself, it'll just spit out basically a bunch of help documentation. But what we want to do is use one of the global flags. So let's do kubectl options down here. It says to use that to get global flags. One of the options that you'll find on the kubectl utility that's global is the kubeconfig option here. And this is the path to the kubeconfig file that you want to use in order to point to different clusters if you have if you want to keep your configs separate. Sometimes the kubeconfig file can be a little bit confusing. And so it can actually be easier if you split them apart into separate files. So what we're actually going to do is create an entirely new kubeconfig file for our Joey user from scratch. So to do that, what we're going to do is run kubectl and then do kubeconfig as the option here. And then we'll set that option to joey.config. And uh, what we actually want to do here is run a subcommand. And in order to configure our kubeconfig file, we are going to be using the... I'm looking for it right here. It's the config command uh, somewhere here. Oh, other other commands. So we've got config here. And this whole context within the kubectl command line utility allows us to set our configuration. So within the config subcommand here, we've got a bunch of different options to manage uh, users, to manage clusters, to manage contexts, and things like that. So the first thing that we're going to do is create our uh, cluster. And so what we're going to do is say set cluster here. So we'll do kubectl config, and then we'll do set cluster, and we'll give it a name. I think if we try to run that without a name, it'll expect at least a name. Sure enough, you can see in the usage right down here, it's looking for a name. And so I'm going to call this Joey cluster. And again, the, the server itself is going to be the same endpoint. So technically, it's not a different cluster. Uh, but I'm just going to give it a friendly name for us to refer to it by inside of our kubeconfig file. So now if we cat the joey.config file here, you can see that it's generated a basic kubeconfig structure for us, and then it created a cluster with basically no configuration in it called joey cluster. So now we need to set the server. We also need to set the public key certificate for that cluster as well. So I'm going to go ahead and cat my dot cube config here again, and I'm going to grab the server endpoint here, and then we'll hit the up arrow a few times, find our cluster config, we'll do dash dash help on it, and as you can see, we've got an option here called dash dash server, and that will be our server endpoint. So let's tack on dash dash server equals our endpoint that we'll paste in. Great, and then let's cat that again just to see what it looks like now. So the server has been set, and the next thing we need to do is to set the certificate authority. And so we'll just go ahead and refer to the file on our file system under the PKI directory to do that. So let's hit the up arrow and we'll remove the server option and we'll set our Joey cluster dash dash certificate dash authority equal to Etsy Kubernetes and then PKI and then CA dot CRT. And that looks to have worked fine. So let's do another cat command here. And as you can see, it is pointing to that file. You can also embed it if you would like to. So there is an option that you can use called embed certs. By default, that's set to false. So it's going to point to that file on the file system rather than actually copying it into the configuration directly, which is the default option that we set. So if I just hit up arrow a couple of times and just add on embed Certs. You can see that that now ran successfully again, and this time the public key certificate is actually embedded directly in the kubeconfig file. Now we need to set the user's configuration as well as contexts. We'll wait for contexts until after we've created our user here. Let's come back up to our config command here, and then this time we're going to do, let's see, we've got get users. We've got uh, set credentials. So it's not actually users. We're going to do set credentials. So let's do config set credentials. And then we are going to give the user a name here. And then we're going to point to the client certificate and the client key, because those are the credentials that we're going to use. And then we'll go ahead and set our username as well to Joey. 
And I think that's pretty much everything we need. And of course we can do embed certs again to embed those certificates directly in the kubeconfig file rather than pointing to them on the file system. And that way we have our entire configuration in one file instead of having pointers to different files on the file system. So we'll do embed certs and then we'll do, uh, we want the client certificate. So I'll copy that and paste it in. Make sure I only have two dashes there. And that is going to be joey.crt. And then we'll do dash dash client key. And we'll set that to joey.key. And we'll hit enter here. And it looks like we are missing something. Of course, I need to specify this name parameter here. So I didn't specify a name. I just went directly to embed certs, client certificate, and client key. So for our name, we'll just call it Joey. And then I'll actually add on the username and set that to Joey as well. So let's go ahead and cat our kubeconfig. So let's do cat joey.config. And as you can see, our public key certificate that's signed has been embedded as a base64 string. And our client key has also been embedded as a base64 string. So kubectl automatically converts it to a base64 string for us. So we don't have to manually do that with the base64 utility, which is a convenient thing. And we've got our profile name, which is Joey. And we've also got the username set to Joey as well down here. All right, so now that our user is set up, we can set up a context and then set it to be the current context in the current context option there. So we'll do a kubectl dash dash kubeconfig, joey.config. And then we're going to run the config subcommand here. And then we're going to set context. So we'll do set context. And we now need to give that context a name. So we'll do name. And I'll call this Joey CTX. And I'll do dash dash cluster. And I think we named our cluster Joey. So if we take a look at our clusters here, I called it Joey cluster actually. So make sure you get that name right whatever you set it to. And then we also need to set the user. So we're binding the cluster to the user and our user should be just Joey. All right, looks good. And the other thing I'm gonna do is actually assign Joey access to a specific namespace. So I'll add in the namespace option here and we'll just set that to databases. So now Joey will basically point to the databases namespace within our cluster. And so at this point, we can go ahead and use that context. So let's do cat joey.config. And we have a current context of empty value here. So we need to set our current context to Joey CTX so that whenever we use this file, it'll automatically use that context. So we'll do a kubeconfig again, or kubectl with the kubeconfig file. And we'll do config. And then we'll say use context. And that'll set the current context and we'll set it to Joey CTX. Awesome. So now if we cat that file one more time here, we should have Joey CTX right there, sure enough, as our current context. So now we can start to manage resources on the cluster using this kubeconfig file and authenticate as Joey. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.